Now then, welcome to Red Army. Um, I'm <coughs> in black for obvious reasons. We didn't quite make it through to Wembley. Uh, we're going to chew the cut over that, both legs. Uh, maybe have a look back a little bit at the season, look ahead as well. Two great guests on the couch, on the famous Red City, Ben Lamb from Teesside University. You've been here a few times, mate. We do like what you've got to say, so welcome back. And uh, some guy used to have a lot of hair. I mean, there used to be the beardy thing. There used to be the tash, famous for the tash and obviously the curly stuff. Tony McAndrew, Trapper, welcome. Thank You've been you. here before. It's always great to see you, man. Yeah, this is my second visit. Yeah, and it's been an agonising week for you as well, hasn't it? Because yeah, it's been, it's your been playing career tough. was Borough, yeah. Borough mainly. Yeah. Um, but then obviously post playing career, a lot of time at Villa. So yeah, it was it was it was difficult, but I mean, I suppose you, you, you home is where the heart is, uh, and this is where I live. So that should tell you a little bit. Hearts on T yeah. side. That's what yeah. we like to hear. Ben, come on then. Reactions to Villa? Uh, well, it was just, I just feel gutted. It was uninspiring, <coughs> I think, really. They just they had a, a set game plan to just man mark all the key players out of the game. So it was just dull, wasn't it? I, th I think for the Aston Villa fan, it was probably a, a stalwart, brave, defensive display. For the neutral, it was dull for us. It was just a stalemate, really. Uh, Besic was running around looking lost, as was Johnny House. And we just couldn't get that extra third, that killer pass to work for us. And it all played into their hands, really. Yeah. If anybody's wondering why I'm looking like this, yes, I normally look like this, I know. But jet lag and then straight to Villa after flying in from Asia. It uh, wasn't a very good night for me. Uh, Tony, we were talking before we came into the studio and we talked tactics and how Steve Bruce got it spot on. And though Ben might be using words like dull and stalemate and, and, and boring, in footballing terms, it was far from that from Villa. It was a game plan, wasn't it? Yeah, I think uh, I think the damage, most of the damage, was done in the first game. Uh, if if you look at it, the first game, Villa, it was a classic away smash and grab performance. They get the early goal, and then it was come on, then see what you can do, break us down, and we'll pick you off on the break. And it was, it's maybe not the greatest thing to watch, but if, if you've worked in coaching and 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 you look at it, you appreciate. What the, what the the coaching staff have done, it was it was classic, it was classic the first game, uh, and last night the onus was 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 basically on on the borough to to go and have a go, but it was always a, a difficult thing for for Villa as well because one nil is a is a, is a difficult scoreline because if it was nil nil the borough still had the score to go through so mm. even at one nil down they still had the score to go through so it was and for a coaching situation it was it was I found it really interesting. Uh, but I, I can understand why people would think it might be slightly uh, not exciting to watch. Well, let's let's have a look at it because I've got. A, I, I'm a realist. Yeah, look, heart on the sleeve and all that for the borough. But mm. I am a realist as well. And if we haven't scored a goal against Aston Villa across two games, what's that? 180 minutes worth of football. We don't deserve to be <coughs> in the playoff final, Ben. But it's the lack of on-target. Shots. It's the lack of what we did in that final third that's cost us. Is that is that fair? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. Um, it was. I just couldn't understand the formation and the team selection for the second game. Aston, Aston Villa, like you said, classic away performance for them at, during the first leg, whereby Traore was just there was five men around him whenever he seemed to have the ball. And he could he couldn't he couldn't do anything. Asamba Longa when he was alone. With the keeper, there was just just wherever we passed the ball, there was men around it. It didn't work. So why on earth would we use the exact same formation? Not give Fabio a run, who actually added something to the game. Gusted as well. Why why is he playing Gusted at the end? He's been injured all season. Was this a pre-season friendly, or was this a battle to get in the Premier League? I, I just couldn't understand the team selection. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure you probably have more insight and tell me why I'm all wrong. Well, I was going to say, I've, I've not been on the inside either, <laughs> apart from holding whistles and running around showing me shot fat, hairy legs uh, as a referee. Um, Tony, was, was there too much emphasis on the Borough? Home leg, you expect to win. Away leg, you said there, the pressure's on the Borough because Villa have got the 1-0 win. I mean, is it? should we have really gone at them by the throat? <laughs> it, it's, I mean, it's a semi-final. I mean, there's, there's... I, and I don't think you can look at the manager and the coach and say, oh, yeah, they, they, they sh you've got to let them do this, do that. When, when you're on the pitch as a player, you should be taking some sort of responsibility. Uh, I mean, I, I'd like to know, for, for instance, how many how many runs did uh, the two centre midfield players make beyond 
the front Middlesbrough's front player to get in behind Villa. They seem to just sit in front of the back four, things like that. I, I, I just that was the only thing that really I found a bit puzzling that the players didn't seem to gamble. Uh, and I don't think you can say, oh, well, maybe the, the manager's not told him to do it. I, I, you should get wrapped up in the game. And, and if, if you're a football player, you should see opportunities when you can go and, and make a run forward or have a little drive forward. I think that was... But you've got to give Aston Villa credit. Mm. They they did a fantastic job over two games. And and I know what that Villa crowd are like. They they, they would be not very happy with, a, with a Villa sitting back deeper because... As I said, first half went on, they started to go deeper and deeper. And you could just hear the, the crowd starting to murmur and, and, and maybe just turn a little bit. Uh, but I know everybody's disappointed with, with maybe the, the, the Borough performance. But again, the, the coach side of me says you cannot, you cannot emphasise enough how well Aston Villa yeah. performed their, their game plan. Yeah, there are a couple of messages coming in on uh, social media and also... Um, across Facebook Live as well. Mark Ifano, have a great show, fellas. Thank you for that one, Mark. Uh, Chris Lofthouse, can we not talk about Villa, please? Tough, mate. We've already done it. <laughs> and we will continue doing it just because you don't want us to. Uh, what else we got here? Um, Pete Mawatt, can't wait for next season. Good positive comment there, mate. We do like that. Wendy, yes, it is. Tony McAndrew. Um, Richie Beach, I can't believe Harrison wasn't used. And Gusted, who's uh, been out for ages, was. Uh, do you think major changes are needed? Is it me or don't we have the two worst fullbacks in English football? Well, it might just be you, mate. I'm sure a lot of people do like gorgeous gentleman George. Um, and Shotton has been shocking for the last few games. Too many short passes. Keep the comments coming in. Hey, look, positive or negative, we'll do, we're realists. We'll, we'll do it as it comes in. Ben, um, I've got to ask the question about, about Borough's tactics. Mm. You want nil down. Mm. You're going to Villa Park. I think the last time these teams, the last dozen times these teams played, the home side hasn't won the game. Mm. An amazing stat. Um, did was it the derby sort of performance we needed, where you grab them by the scruff of the neck and shake them constantly for ninety minutes in the face, close them down, put them under pressure, even though they're at home, you try and dominate the game because that's not what we did. We had the performance from six weeks ago where we just waited for that perfect pass before we had a go. Yeah, I thought <coughs> we, we've uh, we've. I've got nothing to lose, really. We're all we're, we're already got an uphill struggle, so why not say have two two strikers and just keep going at them? They might catch us on the break, but I think fans maybe I think they'd accept that. They'd say, well, you know, at least we we just we just give it that extra push, that extra extra attacking prowess, and like you, like you were saying, at least we'd gambled to win something rather than it seemed like we were playing for penalties or an equaliser and would have been happy with that. Whereas you know, I wanted. Personally, I wanted the, 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 Brentford, the Brentford performances we had a couple of years ago where we just... I mean, we weren't going to get that because Villa are <laughs> a lot better than Brentford yeah. were there, but we didn't even try to score that many goals. I think in the first leg when Asobolongo was, was on his own, if he had, say, someone running into the box, he, he could have squared it to, then we probably would have had smiles on our faces and it would have been a different outcome. So, uh, yeah, I, I think... I don't. I don't want to bash peel this too much, actually, because I. I, th I think that um, all. All the this we've, we we were told when we got him all, oh, it's just going to be negative defensive football, and that's not what we've had over the last few weeks. So I. I didn't even think we were going to get to the uh, playoffs, but we we've scored more goals. We've scored it in every game apart from the last game. So, um, yeah, it just it it just didn't work. <laughs> we're going to start that, looking sorry, ahead. Sorry, Dave. That's that's, that's an interesting point because the, the last time I was on, uh, the it was still the last manager. And there was people actually emailing you and texting you in there, whatever they do, to get rid of him. And mm. they were saying the season's over. And I remember saying, hey, just calm down and let everything settle down. And getting to the playoffs was a, was a decent achievement. But I think mm. Tony Pulis will know exactly what he needs and he'll have earmarked who he wants to bring in, how he wants to play next year. And I think next year will be, it'll be exciting for... We're going to have a look at that very shortly uh, in the second half. It's going to take a break very soon. Um, we've got to look. We've got to look at you know what now, as well as looking back. Um, you think it's purely the experience of Pulis and how many years he's been in the game that he'll know now what he needs. Was th this was a bit of a clear, a bit of a holding pattern until you know he gets his summer under he's, his belt. For me, he's a top, top manager, and and he'll he'll have, he's had a good chunk of time to assess what he's got yeah. and, and and what he needs. More importantly. 
uh, who he keeps, who he, who, he, who he maybe try to shift, who he tries to get in, and he'll know exactly what he needs, what he wants, where he's going to get it from, who we want, and, and, and that'll be in order, and that I think that'll be done very quickly. Okay, well, we'll keep those thoughts uh, to yourselves. Have a think, Ben, about how we need to make changes, and we'll ask Mr Pulis to bear in mind what we're thinking as fans. Get your comments in too as well, social media. You can do it on Facebook Live, uh, usual ways, hashtag Red Army TV, all that sort of stuff. We'll be uh, reading them out as we progress into part two. But for now, quick break. Now then, welcome back for part two. Uh, it's the last time we're going to be in the studio for, uh, for the season. Uh, we're going to be out in our travels. We'll be telling you more on social media throughout the week. Out in our travels. Uh, uh, we're going to try and get some cheap beer in there. Get you some of your in. We'll have a good chew the cut over the season and what we want for next season. Uh, that's next week's show. A couple of messages. Uh, Peter and me are looking forward to the new kit. I love it when somebody pulls that positive little strand, that positive needle out of the haystack. Good man. Steve Cook, uh, can you see us uh, making an offer for Besic? I'd like to see him uh, for the full season. Uh, Neil Bullock, who was on the Red Army coach yesterday at the Villa Park, sat right behind me, you snow mate. Um, highlight of the night was when you drove, that, drove us down that country lane, uh, the driver was going to kill you. Uh, we took the wrong <laughs> turning. And I said, yeah, just turn right here, mate. And it turned up a road about that narrow with a 51-seater coach going through it. It was <laughs> hilarious. And Billy Ashcroft, good to have you with us, Billy, as you do. Um, question for Trapper. <laughs> Any chance you're going to come back as a coach? No, I'm, I'm, I'm retired, Bill, sorry. Why, are you looking for a job? <laughs> <laughs> Get your thoughts in, social media, Facebook Live, all the usual ways. Um, more messages, you on social media. Let's get Matt up to the fore. Here he is with your social media messages. Right, after a disappointing weekend and disappointing end of the season, let's see what you lot have been saying on social media. Starting off with the man himself, Mr Bob Mortimer. Bob said, we were <coughs> Villa were slightly less <coughs> match. Feels <coughs> don't we all, Bob? Uh, Liam Holmes, safe to say it's going to be interesting to see what the summer brings for us. Fair point. Paul Downing, good morning world. Another year in the championship. Oh well, love my team. Always Borough, onwards and upwards, UTB. And finally, Matty Palmer, he said, I can take losing. What I can't take is the complete lack of having to go two legs versus a team that has offered basically nothing. Abysmal shown from us, Pulis out. Oh well, keep your social media comments coming to us here at Borough Red Army. Back to you in the studio. A uh, bit of mopping up from uh, Villa gone before we move ahead. Uh, Michael Smith, Pulis left it too late with the substitutions up the borough. Uh, Michael Smith, hi. Uh, it's it's Mike Smith from Doncaster. Good to have you with us, fella. Uh, that's not bad. And uh, Peter Mia, need a creative midfielder. I think Pulis will get it right. So, will we sign Pesic and we need a creative midfielder? What do you think, Tony? I, I think uh, over these two games, I think what's been highlighted is the, the little lack of crea creativity. Uh, the, for me, watching the, both teams, there was only one player who received the ball on the half turn and let let the ball run and knew he could go could turn. The, he knew where his marker was, and that was Grealish because he played side on. He didn't play with his back turned and square. I think he was the most creative player on view, and I think uh, and I, I'm sure Tony Post doesn't need me telling him how to do his job. His staff and, and himself, they'll know exactly what they need. And I'm sure they'll have targets lined up with that in mind. Besic, full permanent signing in the summer. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, I'd, I'd go for that. I'd, I'd, yeah, definitely. He's he's not had a whole season to prove himself. He was he was brought in in the in the transfer window um, on a loan, uh, and I think he's probably got a lot more a lot more to offer, especially when, when because the important thing is our manager hasn't had the whole preseason period to actually get to know all our players and develop them and so I think I think there are good times coming certainly and Besic hopefully will be a part of that. Okay your thoughts before and after last night's Villa game um, we took the camera out took the coach to Villa Park of course got you in the pub beforehand got you on the coach after a slight difference between the two shall we say have a look at this. Open a 2-1 win Middlesbrough and then go through beat them on penalties Bolton Bamford will play well. Fabio starts. For uh, a win, three-one. Two-nil win. I hope Bamford starts and 
I hope Fabio starts on the right hand side. And not good enough. Not created enough chances. Villa were poor, I thought they yeah. created chances might have been. Two games and nowhere near enough chances created. Two very poor sides. I think Fulham has beat both both of us if we've got through. Absolutely shocked and just didn't turn up. And as for the Villa, they should have had uh, Snodgrass and off on the keeper. It's absolutely shocking. Uh, rubbish. Substitutes came too late, especially with uh, shot on going off. Fabio should have came on earlier. Uh, just not enough. We just didn't have enough. I think it sums the season up really. We just weren't quite good enough. Rebuild in the summer and go again. I think he played wrong team. I think uh, we should have started with Fabio and Bamford up front and I would have liked uh, Downland to be taken off and he could have brought on Jack Harrison. So we didn't have a shot on target. So you can't win a game if you don't shoot at the goal, can you? Uh, big, uh, big difference, wasn't it? Just that football match, that 90 minutes sandwiched <coughs> in between. We were all full of hope and then the hope was gone. Uh, a couple of quick mentions before we get get further into that. Uh, Wilf Mannion would have been 100 years old today. So uh, even though he's no longer with us, let's say happy birthday to Wilf, great Borough footballer. And a quick plug for something that's coming up at the end of the week. Uh, it's on Friday night, actually, the Teesside Family Foundation. Uh, they've got the Teesside Family Foundation trophy. They raise money for all good causes across Teesside, so quite happily we'll give them a plug. Michael Poole against Bespoke Financial, playing at the Riverside in a big charity match. That's on Friday night. You can get down to the Riverside and, uh, and help them out, raise some cash, so good luck with that, fellas. Uh, messages coming in as per normal. Alistair Craig, uh, the ref got it wrong. Goalie was out of his box. Should have been sent off. It's interesting that, Tony, because you feel the same, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know what the, the guy was thinking. Uh, and, and that, again, on, on a night where they didn't have a lot of chances, that was the one opportunity that was going in. Uh, if, if the keeper doesn't use his hand, I don't see any way any of the Villa defenders are keeping that out. So that takes the game to one each. Goalkeeper sent off. They're down to 10 men. He's got to take an outfield player off to put another goalkeeper on. And then the Borough... I've got the advantage then for, for the, the last 10 minutes and then if they can't finish it then they've got an advantage going into extra time. So a real huge, huge mistake by the referee. It's not just me. a game-changing mistake, it could, could have been a season-changing mistake. could have been a 300 million quid I, 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 mistake. I, again, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to hear what he said about it if he said anything. Well, you can only say it wasn't a goal-scoring opportunity, an obvious goal-scoring opportunity because that's what it's all about. Yeah. The keeper's come out of the box, he's used his hands to stop the ball going over his head was it an obvious goal-scoring opportunity? And referees have to tick four boxes for that. One, was it obvious? Was it an obvious chance for scoring a goal? I think 19 yards out and you've put it over the keeper's head, there's, yeah. a, there's an obvious <laughs> opportunity there. Number of defenders uh, in and around, would they have stopped it going in? I suppose that's maybe what he's thinking. Did it have enough legs on it? What was your view? Did you, you, you see it clear enough? Because at first I mm. didn't think it had the legs. No. But when I saw it on TV, I thought, well, there's a fair bit of power behind it. Yeah, I think... Um, uh, Replay in slow motion, all different angles we get. Our, uh, our and hindsight is a wonderful thing. And yeah, uh, initially it was all a bit fast, and they thought, oh well, it, it's, I think people are splitting hairs to say that that would have been a goal. But when you watch it again, you think, oh, actually, that that is a that is a huge call to make. Mm. And I think even Steve Bruce himself has said something along the lines of, uh, yeah, he, he, he could have he could have been sent off uh, the keeper. Yeah. So when the opposition manager is is start, is uh, agreeing to you in so with you in so many words, then. It's a little bit gutting. <laughs> if you look at the flight of the ball, he, he didn't. He didn't lob it over. He, mm. he he hit it straight. The keeper's only done that mm. head height, so it's not as if it's had to go up. So it's travelling fairly quick, straight. I I don't see any of those defenders getting back to stop that if he doesn't touch that. Okay, you heard it here first. We was robbed. Uh, Steve Cook. Over the course of the two games, we didn't show any passion or will to even win the games. Uh, but it's been an okay season since we got rid of Monk. And Tony Pulis came in. I think we've chewed that one over, but thanks for the message, mate. Uh, a couple of minutes left, fellas. So looking forward then. Uh, it'll take a couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months to get the disappointment out of the system. But uh, looking forward to next season. We started out as hot favourites this season. Made it through the playoff semi-finals. What are you expecting for next season? Automatic promotion, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Easy as that, eh? Yeah. Pulis knows what he's doing. He's he's got out. Of the, uh, he's, it was a while since he got out of the championship, but he knows, like you say, he's just. He's a visionary in terms of he knows exactly what he wants, how to get there, which player to get it from, 
and, and that that is a stark contrast from the the start of this season we had where I don't think we'll have players not really understanding their positions and running around like headless chickens. It's gonna. And the other thing I like about him is that he he won't take, um, except anyone who downs tools or you know any prima donnas, they'll be out. Um, and that that's really what what we've needed for a while. Daza Platt. Let's hope Gibbo doesn't say we're gonna smash the league next season. He hasn't said it, mate. Tony, what do you expect from the borough next season, new season? I'm I'm looking forward to. It. I think uh, I think Tony Pulis will use his experience to 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 put together a side that will challenge for the championship. Uh, and do I you would see the nucleus of a side strong enough to be able to do that? Uh, no, I think I think there needs to be some some new blood. Uh, but I, I'd be absolutely amazed if, if Tony Pulis and his staff don't know exactly who they want to come into this football club and who they want to go out. And they, I would think they'll have a plan all in place, just ready to just they're probably on it already. I would think. Well, you've already answered my question, so I'll ask Tony it. So that tenor I put on the borough to finish in the top two this season, I should repeat it next season. Yeah, absolutely. Good man, fellas. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming into the studio, Ben. As always, great to have your views, Tony. We always love it when you're sitting on the chair, mate. We'll have to have you in next season as well. We'll catch you next season, fellas, and you too.